Government officials and the operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant say cleaning up the heavily contaminated reactor buildings will be much harder than they had previously believed. They say additional decontamination work will be necessary before beginning the decommissioning process. Workers have been scrapping off flooring material in the number three reactor building to remove radioactive substances. Tokyo Electric Power Company had expected the work to lower the radiation level to one millisievert per hour. But the operator now estimates that radiation would still range between 10 and 60 millisieverts an hour in some areas. The government and TEPCO decided to introduce more measures to reduce exposure. They include laying down steel sheets on floors to block radiation, as well as removing more layers of flooring material. The operator was planning to remove nuclear fuel from the storage pool of the number three reactor in the next fiscal year. But it's not yet known how the additional decontamination work will affect the schedule. Removal of the nuclear fuel from reactor storage pools is a significant part of the decommissioning process. For reactor number one, TEPCO plans to delay the schedule by two years to fiscal 2019. For reactor number two, officials say they will compile a plan in two years. at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant have implemented the latest plan to prevent radioactive water from reaching the nearby sea, a major problem at the crippled facility. Crews are filling underground tunnels with concrete in an effort to prevent further leaks. Experts believe highly radioactive water in the chambers is mixing with groundwater and flowing to the sea. Authorities with Tokyo Electric Power Company have been struggling to come up with a method to tackle the problem. The firm initially planned to freeze water at the ends of the tunnels to stop inflow from reactor buildings, but that plan failed. Now workers are filling the tunnels with special cement that can solidify even when submerged in water. Company officials say 80 cubic meters of cement were put into the tunnels on Tuesday and did not cause water overflow. TEPCO officials would judge the effectiveness of the new method in about a month. Then they will make a decision on whether to continue with the work, which would take until March. Workers implementing the planner likely exposed to more radiation than they would have in the earlier method. Like that a block a restart of nuclear reactors in central Japan have suffered what could be a setback. Judges rejected their petition for an injunction because they thought it was unnecessary. About 180 people filed to prevent any restart of reactors at the Oe and Takama power plants. They argued a powerful earthquake and tsunami could cause a serious accident. Judges at a district court dismissed their claim. They said nuclear regulators will not approve a restart in a hurry. And they said the firm that owns the plant would still have to work with authorities to plan how to tackle any accident. Judges at another district court ordered the company in May not to restart two reactors at the OE plant. They said the firm's estimate of possible earthquake intensities was too low. Company representatives filed an appeal. A nuclear power plant in southwestern Japan is preparing to restart its two reactors. But the Sendai plant will not likely be back online before February due to a document revision. 
In September, the reactors became the first to clear a new government requirement set up after the 2011 Fukushima accident. The host city's mayor, the prefecture's governor, and local assemblies have all approved the restart plan. Kyushu Electric Power must now obtain approval for two types of documents from the Nuclear Regulation Authority. One is a construction plan that explains the facility's design in detail. The other is a set of rules for operation and emergency responses. Officials of the company told the regulator on Thursday that they will revise these documents and submit them by the end of the year. Kyushu Electric wants to restart the number one reactor first, but that would take at least until February after gaining the regulator's approval of the construction plan and inspections of its new safety measures. All commercial reactors in Japan are currently offline. Meteorological officials say smoke from Kyushu's Mount Aso in southwestern Japan rose about a kilometer and a half into the air for a while on Thursday. They say they believe a magma eruption is underway, judging from volcanic temblers and other ground movement. It is the first time in 19 years that smoke from the volcano has gone this high. Researchers inspected the area near the crater. They found about seven centimeters of ash on the southern slope, as well as fist-sized pieces of lava called scoria. Medium-sized eruptions like this are common at Mount Aso, and similar phenomena may take place. We'll watch carefully what happens on the mountain. The volcanic ash is affecting airline travel as well. The runway at Kumamoto Airport is covered with a thin layer of ash. Airlines have canceled or diverted several flights. I did not expect cancellations because of ash. No one can do much about it. It's a natural phenomenon. The meteorological officials are warning people to stay at least one kilometer from the crater to avoid flying rocks. Some Japanese doctors are thinking of taking a new approach to fertility treatment. They've decided to go ahead with a new clinical study. They'll look, at for, they'll look for several genetic defects in fertilized eggs before replacing them in the patient's body. NHK World's Mitsuko Nishikawa has the story. Doctors may soon have more answers about the fertility levels of their patients. An ethics panel of the Japan Society of Obstetrics and Gynecology gave the study the green light. They'll try to determine whether the new method can help reduce the risk of miscarriages and help women give birth successfully. The proposed study will target women who have failed to become pregnant after at least three attempts at in vitro fertilization. It'll also include those who have experienced two or more miscarriages. The research will employ a technology called Array CGH. Doctors take the eggs out of patients and cause them to become fertile. Using Array CGH technology, they will check all 23 pairs of the human chromosome to find genetic defects before implanting them in the womb. They select eggs that have no genetic abnormalities that could cause a miscarriage. Minoru Irahara says they will also be able to gather important medical data on childbirth. We will be checking whether the method is truly effective in helping women who want to have children. Doctors will also get to know a lot more. They will be able to detect chromosome illnesses, and they'll also be able to detect the gender of the baby. Some medical experts say the study will trigger many ethical concerns. They worry about how much doctors should tell their patients about the results. As a matter of course, the new method presents many ethical problems, as it can detect disorders like Down syndrome. The society plans to seek a variety of opinions before discussing the study with their board of directors. If they're given approval, clinical trials could begin as early as next year. For people who want to become parents, this could be the breakthrough they've been waited for. But some fear that it might bring unforeseen problems. Mitsuko Nishikawa, NHK World, 
Tokyo. <laughs> Japan's leaders are in a race against time. The proportion of elderly is increasing faster than any other country, and the birth rate remains low. Since 2007, the number of deaths each year has outpaced the number of births. The crisis hitting home, and not just in small towns with declining industries, but in the heart of the capital. NHK World's Junior Otsumoto reports. Toshima City in Tokyo is bustling. More than two million people come and go at this train station, one of the world's busiest. The area is known as Japan's subculture center, attracting many visitors, even from abroad. Many young singles move in from across the country. Unlike many other regions, the population here is still on the rise. But a nationwide demographic study indicates that won't be the case for long. It suggests Toshima's population of women of childbearing age will decline to almost half by 2040. That means less and less children will be born here. Mayor Yukio Takano was taken aback by the results. It was a big shock. I jumped out of my seat. Why Toshima City? The problem is that the area is simply not suited for young families. Michiko Kandazu moved to Toshima a year and a half ago with her daughter and husband. She chose the area for the urban convenience. But finding a place to live was difficult. I felt there were so few properties for families. Most available apartments were studios for singles. Kandatsu was surprised to learn 60% of Toshima's households have just one member. The neighborhood has few parks. She takes her daughter Kyoko to play on a patch of ground with little greenery. Kandatsu is a school teacher and wants to go back to work as soon as she can. But she can't find a daycare center for Kyoko. Hundreds of children are already on the wait list. <laughs> the daycare I was counting on has just one opening. I'm quite worried. I'm afraid I won't find a place for her. Kandatsu meets once a month with a committee that gathers ideas from residents. They discuss how best to improve the city's services so people will stay even after they have families. I think we need something that's easy to understand, like no child has to wait for daycare. I like a one-stop place where you can get advice about health and raising children. Members are preparing a report of recommendations to present to the mayor next month. I hope to contribute to making Toshima a better city for children, where they will have their own place. Mayor Takano says the voices of people like Kandatsu are important. I will take into consideration recommendations from those young women about what kind of community they want to live in. It will be a big challenge for me to reflect them in my policy. Professor Hiseka Zukato says the challenge could become even bigger. He's one of the population researchers involved in the study. People are moving from rural areas to the Tokyo metropolitan area. But even so, if they can't bear and raise children here, the population will rapidly decline all across Japan. Leaders from all levels of government are facing growing pressure to act before it's too late. Jun Yotsumoto, NHK World, Tokyo.